There's this YouTuber who goes by the name of iDubs who became very popular through making edgy content and recently his girlfriend has started an OnlyFans account, which is a platform that you can use to sell anything from lewd photographs of yourself to straight up pornography. So naturally everyone online made fun of him for this and he responded by making a video in which he basically says that he doesn't care because he's okay with sex work. So today we will answer a series of very important questions such as is iDubs a simp? Is iDubs a cuck? Are they immoral? Is sex work actually work? Is sex work actually empowering to women? Or is sex work actually just a result of a hypersexualized consumerist culture with a dash of nihilism, mental illness, and daddy issues that we're being told is empowering, but is actually just a coping mechanism? We will analyze, so do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. I'll tell you what, there's nothing that puts a pep in my step quite like drawing the ire of the worst people in society. I'm very excited about this, but a couple things that we have to note right off the bat. The whole reason for this debate, if you'd even call it that, is that much of feminism, believe it or not, seeks to sell the culture on this idea that sex work is empowering. Not only that it's something that we should tolerate, but even something that we should go as far as to celebrate. And their rallying cry for this is usually something like, oh, sex work is real work, sex work is real work, sex work is real work, and as per usual, they could not be more incorrect, but aside from that, it's also dangerous. It's also a very dangerous and frankly evil thing to be telling young women. First of all, the very fact that prostitution exists is proof that the sexual desires of men and women are not even remotely the same. Also, the fact that Playgirl Magazine only has like 3,000 subscriptions and half of them are to gay men. And I have to say this because feminists will have you believe that there's virtually no difference between the male and female brains. Actually, that's even outdated now. Now what they'll tell you is that basically the idea of men and women doesn't even exist either, but you know, that that's for another time. The point here is that if the sexual desires of men and women were actually the same, prostitution would not exist, not historically and not presently, because prostitution involves a man exchanging something of value, whether it's money, jewelry, cars, whatever, for what he wants from the woman, which is acts of sexual nature. You know, if the desires were equal, there would be no need for a different medium of exchange. They would just both agree that sex is being exchanged. And to this, you might say, well, you know, isn't that what hookup culture is? And that's a good point. Yeah, like technically, but you know, that doesn't really disprove what we're talking about here because prostitution still exists and it's always existed. So a couple generations of girls with daddy issues chasing validation through diminishing secretions of oxytocin while living their lives as sentient fleshlights doesn't really disprove the thesis here. Uh, it's sort of a whataboutism, but you know, we'll talk about hookup culture at a later point. So the first thing that I'd like to point out is that there's a couple reasons why it's referred to as sex work. A lot of us would just refer to it as prostitution, but there actually is an umbrella of sex work that would include prostitution. Um, anything from selling nude photographs of yourself to phone sex to much weirder stuff that people will pay for, that's all classified as sex work. And this is actually pretty intelligent on their part, like from a strategic perspective, because it would be much harder to normalize prostitution within a culture than it would be to normalize sex work. Uh, you know, the connotations are just different. And that's exactly Exactly why they did it. They'll maintain that, oh well, no, it's because not all sex work can be described as prostitution, except that the definition of prostitution is literally the practice of engaging in sexual activity with someone for payment. So there's actually nothing that would be considered sex work that couldn't accurately be described as prostitution. So that's the first thing to recognize. All sex work is by definition prostitution. And if you didn't think that prostitution were wrong, you wouldn't have to avoid it by just calling yourself a sex worker instead. But that's the reason they do it. The reason they're doing it is because they're trying to add a legitimacy to it. They're trying to dignify the practice. That's why they say, well, sex work is real work. Like they're trying to instill this idea that somehow the things that they do are dignified. Well, it's just as valid as what you do. I'm a hard worker. And so let me make this clear. No one's denying that you can be a prostitute or, you know, a sex worker, excuse me, and get paid for that. Everyone acknowledges the reality of that situation. That being said, what you're doing isn't really work, let alone such legitimate work that it could be described as real work, right? Like, let's not pretend that what you do is equal to what the lawyer does or what the doctor does or frankly what the e-boy does. And to that you might say, well, what does it matter the complexity of it? I'm still providing a service just like a doctor is, so there's effectively no difference. And I'd have to disagree with that because when we think of work, we have to be specific if we're going to apply the principle consistently and appropriately. There are some definitions of work that just say anything you do for money counts as work. And that's interesting. Like, okay, I can see how that'd be true, but we already know that. No one denies that. I suppose that if you offered me $100 to sit still for an hour, that would count as work. If that were the definition of work that you were seeking to include yourself in, 
You wouldn't be screaming, sex work is real work, because then all you'd be doing is announcing uh, that sex work is something for which you get paid, but everyone already knows that. The definition of work in which you're trying to include yourself and insert your particular service is a definition of legitimacy. It's a definition of relative validity. It's a definition like an activity involving mental or physical effort done to achieve a specific purpose or result. There's dignity in that definition, right? Like maybe it's you've mentally exhausted yourself writing case briefs. Maybe you've physically exhausted yourself unloading trucks. Like, hey, good job. Well done, right? But conversely, you look at something like prostitution. It doesn't require any mental effort. You could literally do the job while using 0% of your brain's CPU. And the same goes for physical effort. You could literally do the job without exhausting any physical effort. And the reason for that is because the only service that you're providing isn't a service like that of the mechanic or that of the attorney. Your service is just that you will let someone use your body to gratify their own sexual desires for money. That's it. That's what you do. I mean, we'll talk about the morality of it later on, but let's just get that out of the way right now that what you do is categorically different from virtually every other type of service in the world. And because of that, we're not going to pretend that what you're doing is actually work. And I know, I know what you're thinking. Well, well, there's more to it than that. You have to put on makeup and you have to act sexy and you have to do the different things that the person wants. And my job's challenging too. It's, uh, that's a good point. That's a good point. I understand. But you have to recognize that all of that is just arbitrary construction on top of the fundamentality of the service, which is just that you're literally renting your body to someone. In other words, yeah, you can go above and beyond, like try to take pride in your work, I guess, but all of that would be effort that is not explicitly included in the job description. All of that would just be to enhance the fundamentality of the act, which is just that you're letting someone use your body for their pleasure. And empirically speaking, that's often at your expense. But even if we pretended that these different aspects of it somehow transformed the nature of the act into something respectable, I still argue that it's not real work because think about some of the different things that are possible through work. Like many people find fulfillment in their careers, for example, you can't find fulfillment through sex work. Like they'll tell you, oh, we're totally happy and fulfilled and the depression and substance abuse rates would disagree, but that's beside the point right now. To find fulfillment in a job requires more than just getting paid. I mean, you have to feel challenged. You have to overcome those challenges. You have to feel appreciated. You have to feel as if uh, you've made an impact, etc. As a sex worker, you can improve, but you don't really have to. Like there's nothing pushing you to do that because again, you can still do the job successfully by just doing nothing other than renting access to your body. Eventually, you'll just be replaced because you were never valued for your mind, nor were you even valued for your body. Like, yeah, you might be hot, but that's replaceable. You know, if you think about the people who we actually value for their physicality, like athletes, what they do is infinitely more difficult and respectable than what you do. And virtually everything about what you do is expendable. Like, sure, you might think that you're the best looking. You might think that you're the best at what you do. But the fact of the matter is that those differences are all marginal. At the end of the day, the type of people that purchase your service don't really care. I mean, prostitution is literally the lowest form of occupation for human beings. And the reason for that is that virtually anyone can do it. It requires no mental effort and it requires no physical effort. If you take any human being in any job and you reduce them to nothing more than a body, you take their mental capacity away and you take their physical capacity away. The only job left on the face of the earth that they could still do successfully is prostitution. And what you don't go through with the physical or mental labor, you go through with the spiritual labor because prostitution, sex work, whatever you want to call it, it's not respectable. It's wrong and there's no dignity to it. And you know that and I know that. And that's why the only people who get involved in it get involved with it out of desperation. And then they only become more desperate as a result. Sex work is always done out of desperation, whether you're desperate for money, you're desperate for attention, validation, whatever. No one would ever become a sex worker if they weren't desperate for something. No one sells access to the human body out of anything other than desperation. And if I sound calloused, I don't mean to be. I'm upset with the people who are trying to glamorize this to young women, frankly, but I wholeheartedly acknowledge that the women who become involved in this almost invariably have histories with trauma, abuse, drug addiction, mental illness, all sorts of terrible circumstances. But the problem is that this industry takes those problems and it amplifies them. And so what we're seeing now with these feminists trying to normalize the symptoms of their disorders through telling young girls that, oh, well, sex work is empowering. Sex work is great. All of that's evil. And we have to stop it literally by shaming sex workers. We have to, as a society, stigmatize that to prevent people from doing it. And obviously, you're never going to be able to put a stop to it completely. I mean, it's basically the oldest thing in the world, process. But the point is that when the rise of the internet happens, you know, with websites like OnlyFans, which targets young girls and tries to seduce them uh, into selling nude photographs and homemade pornography of themselves, we have to cut that off because if we let this continue to be normalized and promoted, it's going to only exacerbate the collapse of the society. That's important too, by the way. 
libertarians, you have an incentive to care about this type of stuff too. You know, if you want to avoid big government, you have to maintain the social fabric of the country to supplement the order in civilized society. If you don't do that, if you just let everyone do whatever they want, society is going to destabilize. And historically, that's when the tyranny comes in. That's when democracy expands and people vote in uh, people vote in the tyranny because they think that that's what's going to bring stability to the society. The founding fathers did not want us to be able to do whatever we wanted. That's not why they wanted us to be free. George Washington didn't want your daughter to have an OnlyFans. They wanted us to be free, provided that we are immoral people capable of self-government. But if we aren't immoral people capable of self-government, then the society is going to destabilize and people will sacrifice their rights for security through a larger, more intrusive government. So if you look at the sexual revolution, for example, much of that was ushered in by this idea of, well, why should you care about what consenting adults do in the privacy of their homes? And if you're not thinking critically about things, you might think, oh yeah, you know, I guess that kind of makes sense. But the thing to remember is that there's no separation of a human being. There's no version of you that does certain things and uh, another version of you that does these things. No, all of your behavior exists within you as a person and it's going to influence your behavior in society. So if you're behaving in a way that is immoral and you tell us that we shouldn't care because, well, you know, it doesn't affect you. Okay, maybe, but there's two problems. The first problem is that it actually does affect us when you act immorally, regardless of whether or not your neighbor knows about it, that's going to have an effect on your consciousness and on your capacity to live a moral temperate lifestyle. And with the sexual revolution, we were told that, well, just because you can't see it, you know, that means you shouldn't care. Just mind your own business, man. And many skeptical conservatives at the time thought, oh no, this is probably going to destroy the family unit. And they were laughed at. Well, now you fast forward 50 years and you look at the single motherhood rate, which is a direct consequence of the sexual revolution. That's largely aided in the destabilization of society. You can look at the suicide rates, incarceration rates, uh, substance abuse rates, dropout rates, even how lonely people are. It's all been made worse by that idea, by the idea that immorality won't pollute a society just because you can't see it. And that's the other fallacy. Do you really believe that people want to stay in the privacy of their homes? I mean, maybe now uh, because of coronavirus, but like, why would they want to stay inside? Doesn't that imply that they should feel shame about what they're doing? They don't want to feel shame. No one wants to feel shame. So what's the next step? Well, after they get everyone to agree that it doesn't matter so long as it stays a private matter, then they move to further normalize and promote it, whether it's parades, on television, in the media, in your children's schools, until now, all of our grandparents are scratching their heads, wondering what the hell happened. I mean, I could go on for an hour about this, but we have to stick to shaming sex workers for now. But I seriously want you to think about this. If we as a society, do not take it upon ourselves to live moral lives, to have self-control, to be disciplined, then we will wake up under tyranny because a society with no morality, with no discipline, is a society without purpose. And a society without purpose is a society that sees no reason for its own greatness, has no incentive to preserve itself. So it welcomes its own destruction as almost a relief. Does that ring a bell? Because that's what's happening right now. Your problem is not big government. Your problem is that big government is coming to fill the vacuum. Big government is coming to replace what the society used to have 70 years ago, which was a universal objective morality. But anyways, back on track. So this guy iDubbbz got popular for making YouTube videos where he would criticize people. And then we find out uh, last month that his girlfriend started an OnlyFans after she got a boob job. So basically what this means is that people pay her $10 a month to get access to lewd photos of her while she's dating iDubbbz. And there's a few other details surrounding it that could be rumors. So I'll just leave that out. But it turns out iDubbbz is like totally okay with this, but his fans were definitely not. They started making fun of him, calling him a simp, calling him a cuck, all sorts of things. And I have to say, I actually disagree with those criticisms. And I'll tell you why. First of all, you guys are ruining the word simp. So knock that off right now. It's a very important word and you guys are diluting the integrity of it. A simp is a guy who puts women on a pedestal and gets no reciprocity. Idubs is dating this girl. They're presumably sleeping together. So he's getting reciprocity. If Idubs weren't dating her and he were just paying for her surgeries and her makeup and all of that because, well, he just likes her so much and she wasn't reciprocating any of that. She was just hitting him with, oh, thanks, buddy. Like that would be simping. I don't think that what he's doing is considered simping. Now, the other big one, which I think is more accurate, but still basically wrong, is that people are calling him a cuck. The reason I don't think he's a cuck is because people are paying to see the photos. And also, they're just photos. If she were sleeping with people for money, he'd be a cuck. Or if she were just giving out the photos for free, he'd be a cuck. But I don't think that he's a cuck for being with a girl who's getting paid by simps and orbiters to see her, not even naked apparently, but just lewd. So that being said, you can still bully the hell out of him because what he's doing is immoral and what she's doing is immoral and we'll explain why, but I'd like to know what you think in the comments. You know, if I were a, if I were with a girl and she started doing this, she'd be like gone immediately. Oh, well, look how much money she's making. That's another thing. This girl's now making like tens of thousands of dollars a month just selling pictures of herself. And that's not really because she's hot. Like you look at her, you know, I don't know. I always thought that she kind of looked like a girl who was almost really hot, but then wasn't. Like God was just putting her face together and then all of a sudden someone just like bumped into him. He's like, hey, watch it. Jeez. 
yeah, dad, no, no, it's figurative, but you know, basically the fact that so many men would pay to see this woman, not even totally naked when porn is completely free, it's just pathetic. And I'm not saying any of that's good, it's all wrong, but I'm just saying that like, if you're not gonna be moral, you can at least try to make it economical, right? But I guess not. But first I wanna talk about why I don't like the backlash that he got for this. The problem really wasn't the backlash, like that it existed, the problem was it was misdirected. So he was being accused of hypocrisy. People were calling him a huge hypocrite. and. I don't know if that's true. I'm not really familiar with his content, so I don't know if he had taken a stand against this type of stuff before, but hypocrisy is of course wrong. Hypocrisy is not a virtue. But why is that the majority of the backlash? Why is the big moral criticism of this whole affair that he's supposedly a hypocrite? I mean, like I'm much less worried about his hypocrisy and more worried about neither of them having a problem with it. And also that the direction of the backlash is almost exclusively focused on this idea of, oh, well, he let us down. He's a hypocrite. He let us down. He let me down. Like people were upset about it, not because he and his girlfriend are doing something that's wrong, but only because they think that it affects them directly because Idubs, who they admire, is now supposedly a hypocrite. So my question is, why did he let you down? Why were you emotionally in invested into idubs, let alone a celebrity in general. Like his fans legitimately feel betrayed by this. And it's like, why? And this is one of the effects of celebrity worship. People outsource their morality and their interest to the celebrities that they worship. And then they're upset to find out that perhaps they shouldn't have been so invested in them in the first place. He actually, he had a really good line, I think, um, in the response video that he made. He told, he told his viewers, I'm not your dad, which I thought was a really good point, even if he didn't mean it to be, because I don't think that it excuses him, but it's like, yeah, why are you searching for identity in idubs? The extent of identity politics and celebrity worship in this country can be traced back to the breakdown of the family, by the way, as a result of the sexual revolution. I mean, people don't have a familial identity anymore, so they seek identity elsewhere, right? But it's a little different when the person is famous for promoting ideas or principles. Like if I found out that Jordan Peterson were actually slouching in his day-to-day -day life, I would feel somewhat upset about that. Like, I don't know if I'd go as far as to call it a betrayal, but you get the idea. But to invest yourself into someone that just makes edgy YouTube videos just seems foolish to me. I mean, the criticism should have been what you guys are doing is wrong, not I'm upset about this because I feel as though you've misled us and this shatters my perception of you in which I was emotionally invested. But as far as why it's wrong in the first place, there's a few reasons. I don't know what a good operative definition of morality would be for this, so feel free to supplement. But I think generally that which facilitates the flourishing of human beings is moral. So when you sell your body in any capacity, you are doing damage to yourself, sometimes physical, but also internally. You are telling yourself and behaving as though you have no purpose other than to be used to gratify the sexual desires of others. And that is why sex work is plagued by mental illness, substance abuse, all sorts of negative factors, because people cannot do that to themselves without it hollowing them out. And you might say, well, a lot of times the mental illness and substance abuse was there beforehand. And you'd be right. Sex work makes it worse though. And also I don't think that acknowledging how vulnerable people are when they begin doing sex work is actually like making a case for why it's good. It's exploitive, but you're also reducing the value of human sexuality to something that's purely transactional. You're removing the responsibility from it and just gratifying someone else's desires for payment. But you're still going to secrete more oxytocin than him, and that's going to hollow you out, and it's going to depress you as well, and you're also treating sex as something that's transactional instead of what it actually is, which is the process which brings men and women together to be unified and create human life. You're devaluing it. And once it's devalued, the family structure collapses. And lastly, it reduces human beings. You're reducing people to literal objects that you can just use. You, you just rent access to them. Reducing humanity to that capacity reduces the respect that we have for humanity. All of these, both individually and cumulatively, diminish the human capacity for flourishing. And worst of all, it's wrong to entice others. It's wrong to corrupt other people. It's wrong to bring them to your level. And by exploiting the desires of men for your own financial gain, you're doing exactly that. And here's a little litmus test for all the people that are gonna say, oh, I don't care, this doesn't affect me. If your mother or your daughter told you that she was selling her body, you'd be upset. So your morality is relative. You don't care when other people do it, but if someone you do care about does it, then you'll object because you're not applying that standard universally. If you think that something is okay, then you should have no objection to it being done by anyone, regardless of if they're a complete stranger or your daughter. And if you're not consistent, who's to say it won't be your daughter? You know, the culture normalizes and accepts it. She grows up in it. She thinks nothing of it. Good luck. This is an industry that targets young women. The fact that they publish articles like this in Teen Vogue is just proof that this industry propagates by targeting and grooming young girls. They glamorize it. Oh, look how much money you can make. Oh, pay off your debt. Buy the new iPhone. Buy all of the brands. Like literally asking you to sell yourself. And I'm not going to preach right now. But one of the things that really brought me to Jesus Christ was reading the Christian explanation for good and evil and the ways that they work in the world. And then seeing the things like this, which have very demonic connotations, you know, flesh, lust, body, cell. And it really made me start to... You know, 
You know, like, what's going on? Not today, Satan. No, no, no. You know, like, this is what it is. Satanism. Satanism is just selfishness. That's all it is. I mean, it manifests in different ways. It's not always animal sacrifice, but fundamentally it's selfishness. And for these people to not only profit off the exploitation of human beings, but to try and normalize it and promote it for their own gain, despite the abuse and trauma and evil that is elemental to the practice. That is selfish. For every pasty, average looking girl with an OnlyFans screaming about how sex work is real work, there's a young girl being trafficked and abused. To anyone that promotes this, you are the, of all things, you are below mosquitoes. But the money's not enough. That's the thing. For most people, they probably wouldn't even kill for money unless it was like a lot. There has to be something else besides money for this to function. So what do they do? They have literally managed to convince feminists that prostitution is empowering. They have convinced generations of women that the industry rampants with human trafficking, disease, abuse, trauma, mental illness. Yeah, uh, that's empowering. It's unbelievable. And just the logical consequences of the sexual revolution. By the way, the sexual revolution told us that we can't judge any expression of sexual behavior. Otherwise, you just want to control women. That's what it must be about. And that's the distinction that has to be made, whether you want what's best for women or whether you want women to be able to do whatever they want to do. This is why any objection to female behavior is met with, well, you just want to control women. It's because they're not even considering what's best for women because they don't care. They just want to do whatever they want without feeling guilty for it. And that's why they're projecting that guilt onto you by claiming that you're trying to unjustly control them instead of acknowledging that perhaps they feel guilty because they're participating in acts which they know to be wrong. And... If you listen to how these sex workers try to rationalize it, they'll say things like, oh, well, it's empowering. They tell me I'm pretty. They tell me they like my company. Yeah, I'm sorry to break it to you, but they don't give a f about you. When you leave, it's going to be somebody else. You're disposable. You're like a napkin in an old car. And, and what do you mean it empowers you? Being empowered just means being able to choose. Being empowered, it's such a cope. Being empowered just means to have control or authority over yourself. And since we know that the overwhelming, overwhelming majority of women that become involved in prostitution have a history of sexual abuse, mental illness, or similar factors, they're trying to get around that fact. They're trying to get around the fact that they were either coerced into doing it by saying, well, now that the damage is done and I'm happy about it, now I'm choosing to do it, so I'm actually empowered. Or they're saying, well, you know, I was actually sexually abused throughout my life. Uh, someone used my body for their own desire. And now they're saying, well, this time I'm letting it happen. I'm choosing to let people use my body this time, so I'm empowered. It's interesting because even that in itself acknowledges that what you're doing is just letting someone use your body to gratify their desires, right? Like, if you can use me, I can use you. The problem is that in order for you to use them, you're just giving up your literal body and they're giving up, what, some, some cash? Who cares about cash? You're lowering yourself to the same level of, I will use people to fulfill my desires, but then you're still playing yourself because what you're giving up is going to affect you much more in the long run than it is them. There's nothing empowering about participating in an industry that reduces women to commodities, you doorknob. Like, like, what do you mean empowered? Is it supposed to empower you? Is it supposed to empower women? What about all of the women who have been taken advantage of and abused by this industry? What about all of the women whose marriages have been destroyed because of your industry? Because it exists to literally profit off the weaknesses of men. Are those women empowered? What about the women who feel as though they have to compete with the artificial standards for beauty and sexuality that have been set by this industry? Are those women empowered? What about the women actively involved in it? Are they empowered? The illness, the drug abuse, the, the sexual assault, the mental illness, is this empowering? It's all wrong and disgusting. It's becoming easier to get involved with it too now because these websites that are targeted young girls and because these narratives that teach them, well, it's actually empowering, you know, promoting sex work it doesn't make the industry safer, like some people claim. It just expands it. You think people who traffic human beings are going to respond to government regulation? No, no. It also increases child prostitution, by the way. It increases the demand for prostitution in general. All of this is, of course, at the expense of women and at the society as a whole, at the expense of the society as a whole. And if you don't believe me, talk to the victims of the industry. This industry that, by the way, is all about consent. Everything is fine. There's no such thing as sexual morality. The only arbiter of sexual morality is consent. Everything is fine as long as it's consensual. Yeah, that's called consent-based morality. And it exists because the sexual culture is so depraved of all other morality, it is starving for any remnants of morality. And all that can be retained is an emphasis on consent. And they project the pain that they feel after these encounters onto the only moral law that they know, which is consent. And this is why you have women coming out of these encounters, realizing that the guy didn't actually care about them and deciding that that means that they've been raped. They feel violated by this because you're taking from them the last piece of morality that they have left to protect the most sacred interaction in human existence and reducing it to exactly like you're treating it, like it's just no big deal. There's no longer any love. There's no longer any commitment. All that they have left is that they've agreed to it. 
But the emphasis in itself acknowledges the very nature of sex, because if sex were purely physical, then why is rape worse than other types of violent crime? Seriously, if sex is just physical, if it's just transactional, why do we all know without a doubt that raping someone is worse than punching them in the face or even beating them with a golf club? It's because we all know that sex is significant and we all know that it's wrong to devalue it. And doing that has certainly had disastrous effects on our society. And I truly feel bad for these women. I mean, these women that are screaming about being empowered despite that they've allowed themselves to become slaves to their own desires and to the desires of other people. For these women screaming about, oh, well, it's consent, 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 because they think that the reason everyone's depressed isn't because people are naturally seeking intimacy, right? It's, it's because there's not enough consent. Whereas if you were in a committed relationship with someone, consent is implied since you guys trust each other, you guys love each other. But the feminists have stolen that from these generations of women. So they're left with the crumbs of what that love and commitment is, just in the form of, hey, I at least respect you enough to ask to get your consent first. That's all that they have left. So they're clinging to that with white knuckles. All other significance has been destroyed. It's all very sad, really. I don't know. I, I'll try to be nicer about it. A rare earnest moment for the feminists here at Heck Off Com. You know, we have to we have to be patient with them because at the end of the day, they're not mad at you. They're not mad at me. They're just mad at their fathers. Hey, guys, if you like this video, I need you to do a couple things real quick and then you'll be good to go. You can move on to the next video. Everyone's just relaxing in quarantine. OK, I'm sorry. I'll be expeditious. First, leave a like, thumbs up right down there. Second, leave a comment with your thoughts. I'm curious. Third, subscribe to the channel. Fourth, extremely important, please turn on notifications. I am begging you. YouTube, I've been getting messages from you guys every day. They stop putting my videos in the recommended thing. That a big problem really gets me down, down in the dumps. We don't wanna be down in the dumps in quarantine. Recipe for a disaster. So turn on notifications and then share the video with your friends, get a quarantine group chat, pass it around. We have to shame the sex workers. What you guys are doing is wrong. You prey on young women and I don't like you for reasons that I just mentioned. And if you didn't retain all of it, you can start the video over because it's going to be here forever or until YouTube takes it down or until George Soros pays me off, whichever comes first. But thank you so much for watching and may God bless America.